First to Dublin, Ireland, where Experimental is asking a pointed question. What don't you like about going to the doctors? Needles. The needles. 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 Carl can. Hang on. What was that? Needles. Needles. All oh, right. That's better. Yeah, no one likes being jabbed, especially when it's what the medics call an intramuscular injection, i.e. in the bum. But hey, at least you're getting your medicine, aren't you? Well, not always, according to the research of a woman who's pricked more bums than most, Dr Victoria Chan of the Adelaide and Meath Hospital in Dublin. I have personal experience of patients having uh, pain medication or anti-nausea medication injected, and an hour later, the nurse would come back to me and say that it didn't work. The patient is still feeling pain. The patient is still feeling sick. It used to be that bums were a really good place to inject drugs. The problem is the bums are changing. In the West, at least, backsides are getting fatter, which means that needles will have to penetrate further to deliver the drug to the underlying muscle. Now, this is a three centimeter length needle, or an inch and a quarter, which is the approximate length of the most commonly used needle for intramuscular injections around the world. Now, what the needle's going to do is go through the skin, through the layer of fat, and into the muscle. Depending on how much fat is overlying the muscle will dictate whether this needle is long enough to reach the muscle. So maybe, and you are not going to enjoy this, the needle is not long enough. To find out, Dr Chan enlisted 50 patients, each willing to allow her to add a little extra something to their normal bum jab. Each patient received a, the medication that was prescribed by their physician along with a small amount of air so that we can see a black air bubble on the CT scan. But isn't that deadly? No, not at all. First of all, it's a small amount of air, and also when we are injecting, we pull back on the syringe so that we know we're not in a blood vessel, because it's only if we inject air into a blood vessel that might be a little bit dangerous. Only very slightly inflated by Dr Chan's needles, the patients were inserted into a CT scanner, which revealed where the bubble solution ended up. So what you see on this screen here is the CT scan. You can see here that this is the skin, this is the layer of fat, and this is one of the gluteal muscles of the bum. This black thing here is the air bubble that we had included with each injection to the patient. This air bubble has remained in the fat, so this would be considered a failed intramuscular injection because the medication has not reached the muscle where it's supposed to. In fact, of her 50 bottoms, she found out that the right amount of bubble solution reached the muscle in only 56% of male behinds and only 8% of female butts which is a bit of a bummer. When we look at men and women, women in general have more fat around their bum than men. But a patient does not necessarily need to be obese in order for the injections to fail. The size of the needle is only three centimeters or an inch and a quarter, which isn't that big to begin with. Hmm. You know what's coming, don't you? What we need is longer needles. For example, a five centimeter length needle as opposed to a three centimeter length needle. But just how much bigger is a five centimetre needle? That is necessary. really intimidating. It's very long. Oh, my God! Hey. No, no, I'd rather that one than that one. Yeah, that looks worse. Yeah. <laughs> but thicker, it's going back to the Victorian age, doesn't it? You don't, it doesn't need to go in that deep. Yeah. No, <laughs> give me the old one, please. <laughs> That's a big one. So, the moral of this pointy problem is, if you want your medicine, but you don't want to be pricked by one of Dr Chan's extra-long needles, you'd better get your bum into shape.